Hey everyone, this is John Buck, back for another Array Signal Processing video. Um, this video is going to be a, a quick review or sort of mini tutorial on projection matrices, which are a linear algebra technique we can use for decomposing a vector into the sum of two vectors, one of which is parallel to another vector of interest, uh, and the other is what we call the orthogonal projection, uh, the, rem the remainder. And like so many things in engineering, sometimes the key to getting a good result is thinking about how to take this uh, thing you're interested apart into the sum or superposition of two pieces that are easy to analyze, where you can't analyze and the whole thing is kind of hard, but once you find the right decomposition, the right way to break it into the sum of two parts, analyzing those two parts isn't so bad, uh, and then you can, you can use those to get your answer one piece at a time. And we'll be using this a lot in arrays, so I thought it would be good to do just a short sort of explainer video or tutorial on uh, on on these and how they work uh, before we get into applying them uh, into uh, null steering or notch steering in uh, beamformers. Okay, so uh, for projection matrices, again, the main idea is that we have some vector x we're interested in, and we're going to want to decompose it into the sum of two orthogonal components. Uh, one of those components will be parallel to some other vector a. Right, so we want to write x as the sum of two pieces, one of which here, this first piece, we'd call x sub a, and it's the projection, right, if I project this down onto the axis, it's the projection of x in the a hat direction. The other piece is this one here, so I'll make a, a green line to show that, right, is the orthogonal piece here, which is what's left. And it's perpendicular, right? This forms a right angle with A. And we would call this piece here X sub A perpendicular, right? So again, the key idea here is that X A, X sub A, is parallel to this reference vector A, whereas this is x sub a complement, or x orthogonal, some people will call this. This is a little right angle symbol up here in the exponent. So it's perpendicular. So we use the right angle symbol to a, right? But, but by visual construction, we can see that our original vector x is the sum of these two components, the part that's parallel to a, and then everything else, the orthogonal component. In fact, if you like, some people would define the orthogonal component is equal to x, the part that's orthogonal to a is the part, all of x, minus the part that's parallel to a. And so projection matrices are ways of, of efficiently computing these, and as I said in the intro, it's often very helpful to be able to do, uh, to, to decompose some vector x in terms of some other direction we're interested in plus another one. So this might be like a weight vector relative to the direction, the, the replica vector or manifold vector of an interferer, we'll see uh, in another thing, another class today. But let's just go through this for now. So if I want to find x sub a, that is the portion of x, this vector x projected onto a, what I would do to find the length of this projection, I would say I want to take the unit vector in the a direction. So that would be a bar divided by its length, right? Make it into a unit vector and take the inner product of that with x, right? So when I do it this way, this is the length of the projection of x onto a. And then if I want to actually have the vector the project of doing that projection, I say, well, I would take this length and scale the unit vector by that. Since this is all a scalar, I can put it at the end here. And so if I take a make another version. This is again the unit vector in the a direction. Okay, so this here is the unit vector in the a direction. And this happens often enough that, that it has a name that we when we say first of all when we when we're done with that what we've just found is x sub a. This is the component of x in the a direction or parallel to a. And we, we do this often enough that we'll call this capital P sub A of some vector A of X, right? So in general, P sub A, capital P sub A, is the, pro, the projection matrix is 
AA Hermitian over the magnitude of A squared, right? I've got two magnitudes of A's in the denominator. And we'll see there's a, a convenient reason if we think about multiple constraints later to also think of this. I can write magnitude of A squared as the inner product of A with itself. So this is, is what we call the projection matrix. in the A direction. And so then we say, well, how do I find the, the orthogonal component? Well, we can start from, from what I had here a second ago, this subtraction. I can say, well, if I want to find uh, X sub A complement, I said, well, first of all, I could I could use the projection matrix just to find x of a and then subtract it off. And that's one way to compute it. If I want to go directly there, though, without sometimes I will want the orthogonal component without needing to find x of a first. I don't necessarily need it. I can still uh, do this in kind of uh, a roundabout way. I can say, well, I can rewrite x as i times x, which is one of these annoying professor things where we write something simple more complicated way at first because we have an ulterior motive. And then I can say, you know, just what I had a second ago, x sub a, the projection in the a direction, I can write it with the projection matrix. And then I can factor the x off the right-hand side of this. So I can say if I take the identity matrix and subtract the projection matrix and multiply that by x, I will get go directly to this is, again, the orthogonal or complementary component. Depending on which book you read, you can see either one of these names. Component of x. And so if I, I can also then just fill this in, I can say, well, I have i minus a, that projection matrix is a a Hermitian divided by a Hermitian A. All of that times X. And this again also shows up often enough that it gets a name that we call this matrix P comp the, pro the orthogonal projection or the complementary projection. So it's P sub A again with that right angle bracket as an X as a superscript. Right, so just to, to write that out on its own, right? The ortho so we have the, the projection matrix P sub A is A, A Hermitian divided by A Hermitian A. So the outer product of A divided by the inner product. And again, this is for a single vector. We'll see in class there's a generalization uh, for multiple vectors if I'm trying to do this with a subspace, not just a single vector. The orthogonal complement then is I minus PA, which is I minus AA Hermitian over A Hermitian A. And this, writing it this way, makes it clear to see if I add these two together, I just get I back. So between them, they are a complete identity, right? That all of X is, you know, I can, I'm break, breaking X into two pieces, but nothing's getting lost. Some of X is projected in the A direction. Everything else ends up in the, the complementary direction here. So that's our, our quick review of projection matrices. I'll stop here and then uh, we'll be referring to this and using this when we think about null steering for, for beam forms.